and welcome to Fat Squirrel Speaks. Today is Monday, October 24th. This is 182. How are you? I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. I am feeling a little discombobulated. I haven't recorded in forever. Please don't hate me. Okay. You can totally hate me if it makes you feel better. That's okay. Just don't send it really hard to me. Just. <laughs> things have just been kooky wacky not like that kooky wacky most people will be like Psh. <laughs> but for me it's been kooky wacky <laughs> I have enough kooky wackiness in my internal life when there is also kooky wackiness in my external life I just can't handle it I totally had a terrible stress nightmare last night I had a terrible stress nightmare last night where I had to go back and work for the man. Oh my God, it was an awful, awful dream. I woke up like sick because it was like that thing where when you first wake up, you're not really sure if it actually happened or not. And I woke up and I was just like, oh, oh. And I was like, that's not real. And then I was like, oh my God, but it could be real. And then like everything's fine. So I've been having some of those times. <laughs> and believe it or not, like, I, yeah, I know, right? This podcast is always kooky wacky. But, like, I kind of have to be in the right headspace to do it. There's been stuff messing with my headspace lately. <laughs> stop it, stop. No big deals. Really? No big deals. Um, but it's just been kind of crazy. We had... Okay, so before I get into anything else, let me just discuss. Usually I, re I record every other week. I haven't recorded in like six weeks. I don't know if that's actually correct, but it's probably close. I don't even know anymore. One thing after the other, people. One thing after the other. Anywho, so what I'm going to do today is talk about Rhinebeck and crazy stuff about a Rhinebeck. Woo -woo. And the kid along that's happening in the group and shameless self-promotion and the, and I'll just I have one finished chapter that I'll talk about but then what I'll do is in just like a few days I'll record another episode that's more of a traditional episode with like actual knitting co and spinning content so if you're not interested in the fluffy shenanigan bits then this is just just save this just delete this episode you're not interested I'll see you next time um, but that's what so that's what I'll do I don't like to do them back to back and I don't want to do like a two hour episode. So that's that's my solution at this moment. <laughs> okay? Okay. So, shenanigans. This will be all shenanigans. I don't even know why I'm saying it's shenanigans. But part of the reason I have not returned, like I, my schedule has been off, and I, this is going to sound so lame. And it is lame. It's totally lame. I am a lame human. Honesty. Self actualization is painful. But like, we had like one of those like sh like random dudes show up on our porch like four weeks ago now. Gosh, for the saga. <laughs> and it was like one of those shady deals where he's like, "Oh, I'm doing this work on this other bit, this other property that's down the street, and I have this extra concrete, and I see that you have some masonry that needs to be done." Uh, we have brick, a brick front porch. Our house is at least 1920s, but we think actually maybe slightly earlier than that. And like, I'm sure it's never been tuck pointed. <laughs> so like we have these pillary-ish, they're not pillar, but like the, there's the porch and then the steps go down from the porch and there's like the little pillory bits on the side. And one of them is really like bowing out and it's like, Mwah. <sighs> And again, there's just been general tuck pointing that needs to be done. So, so anyway, so he was like, yeah, I'll just do your steps because they were kind of rough or whatever. And he's like, if you like what I do, then we can talk about maybe doing a quote on some other stuff that you need to be done, that needs to be done. And he's, you know, he was like a, I don't know, six, like late fifties, early sixties, probably gentleman. And like, he was clearly a hardworking fellow for his life. His hands were very much look like a concrete worker's hands. Like, he did a very good job on the thing. And so we discussed it after he gave us the quote, my husband and I, and we thought, well, it would be really nice to be able to like, 
I mean, it's not like charity in terms of like, we're just gonna, but it was like, I, as a small business person, I appreciate when people give me the benefit of the doubt and trust that I'm gonna do what I say and provide them the product that I, that I feel good about and that hopefully then they will feel good about. Like some people like, I've said like I've discounted some items in the shop because they were like off kilter or something. People are like, I would have never noticed. So, but I notice and like that's, I sleep well at night. Oh, I sleep so well at night. <laughs> and yes, sometimes I make mistakes by like just like accidents, but I don't knowingly do anything shady. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just like for my own inner peace. So you kind of hope that other small business people are going to operate that way. And then sometimes they don't. And that is what has happened to us. It's not terrible. It's not the end of the world. Basically, we just paid for something we have to have redone because it was not done very well. And it was done shadily. And it was supposed to take three days and it took three weeks. And like all sorts of craziness happened in those three weeks with it. And really, it should not have been a big deal at all. And it could have been less of a big deal if I just was a stress nugget. So like I made it a bigger deal in my own internal life instead of just being able to be like, let it go, it'll happen what happens. Like that's what's gonna happen anyway. But I just like to like, you know, make my own ugly, disgusting hate pearl with it. And then just... <laughs> and so... <laughs> that, combined with my husband's schedule being crazy, and fall break for my kids, she was home. It was just like all of those vectory vortexy things were happening. And believe it or not, I kind of have to be in the right headspace to do this podcast. I know, right? Because I'm always crazy on this podcast. But like, it's a different kind of crazy than my normal crazy. And so I have to be in the right place to be that crazy. So that's why I didn't do a podcast in a while. I'm sorry! <laughs> And then we're going to ride back another small business. Again, I do, and I will continue to do small businesses, but it's just, we, like, again, it's another issue of, like, again, giving, like, extra leeway to a small business person. And, like, it was a hotel that they didn't, like, it was, like, a thing where you called to make your reservations at the Catskill Mountain Lodge. And so we were given a quote over the phone in April and like, sure, mistakes happen, right? Like employees don't understand you. And like, sometimes they give you the wrong information. But then like through a series of things where we were like, oh, it's just because they're a small business and they're, you know, they've been doing this for a long time and, and they just operate like this is what happened with this guy too. Like, right. It was the whole time I was like, He's just operating on like a different generation's approach to business, like a handshake kind of thing. Like we are taking a risk of a handshake, but you know, like that's, I guess that's the deal we're going to do just, and again, it wasn't an amount of money that was going to make us die if we didn't have it, but it was a lot of money. <laughs> <sighs> we don't go to Vegas, but we went to Vegas in our own front yard. Hmm, there was no buffet. What the crud? Anywho. So the other business, <laughs> but again, it was the same thing where you're like, okay, it's like a general, it's a business. They've been doing this for a long time. They're operating on like an older style of like handshake. Cause they're going to trust us and we're going to trust them. And like, we're going to do this and it's going to be beneficial for all of us. <sighs> and then you get to the place that you're staying at for Rhinebeck and it's like 10 o'clock at night and they ring you out and you give them your card and they give you a receipt, just a little receipt that tells you how much your card caught, like your signee receipt, you know, that, that runs through the machine. And you think that number jives with what I was told it was going to cost. And then you come back for the last night that you're going to be at Rhinebeck and you have this note in your room that's like, we thought you were leaving. You need to come and see us in the morning about paying us up more money. And you're like, wait, hold up, huh? <laughs> and basically you have to give them more money because like now you're a barrel and you have nothing to stand on because again, you're operating under this like, we're doing this the old fashioned way. I 
I guess you can't do things the old-fashioned way anymore. It's kind of sad. It's not kind of sad. It's actually wicked sad. <sighs> Poop on that. So anyway, so yeah. Again, I totally, the whole thing with the Catskill Mountain Lodge, it could have totally been an honest mistake on their part. But then there, was, then there was like lack of good business practices, which those big good business practices would have alerted us to the fact that they had made a mistake. And instead, those business practices were not in place. So we were left paying them a lot more money than we thought. Well, again, a third more money than we thought we were going to pay them. Wait, that's not right. Half again more money than we thought we were going to pay them. Because we were paying, we thought we were paying for three nights. And they thought we were paying for two nights. And then things so anyway you don't care I'm sorry that was a bit of a rant but anyway so that, I just try to explain that like <laughs> the hamsters and the wheels have been running in counterproductive directions but now I'm gonna get my momentum back <laughs> and we're moving forward okay okay so let's talk about Rhinebeck though oh my gosh Wait, before we talk about Rhinebeck, before... No, no, we'll talk about Rhinebeck. But just a reminder. No, we'll talk about Rhinebeck. Let's talk about Rhinebeck. <laughs> I was thinking about talking about the... Okay, I'll talk about the kid along first. Because I know not everyone's to hear about Rhinebeck. Because sometimes there's that whole, like, grief thing where you didn't get to go. And you're like, I don't want to hear about it. So I'll just talk about the kid along first. And then we'll talk about Rhinebeck. Does that sound good to everybody? At the very end, there'll be some shameless self-promotion. Okay. So the kid along is still going. I think what I'm actually going to do is, just, I originally had decided that I would close it like, it would just run through October. But I think I'm going to run it through the middle of November because I was on like crazy hiatus for every moment there. So I think I'm going to run it through the middle of November. And I actually will offer a prize. I'm going to start that thread where... And I'll, if you have, like, a finished thing, I'll just try to shoo it over there so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but for every, like, 20 finished object, twenty finished thingy doodles, I will um, give out a $51 gift certificate for the shop. So that'll get you up to a sweater size bag with domestic shipping. Um, so you get whatever size you want. And then I'll get that out to you. Does that sound good? Okay, we'll do that. But I have some finished objects. Oh, my gosh, I forgot one that's, like, totally awesome. Okay, so I have many kits that I could be choosing from. And in fact, I have another one that I really do want to start, but it required like some weird thing that I didn't have that was not included in the kit. <laughs> so it threw me off my momentum. So, but the one thing I am working on, shut up. Oh, that's right. It is a vintage plastic canvas kit. So this is, I don't even know how to say that. Is it Brusilla? Is that how I say that? Needlepoint kit. It's a set of six ornaments. There's a church in there too. So you get the kit. It has like the plastic canvas, the directions, and like a bunch of really what appear to be like bulky weight wool. Okay? Not wool. <laughs> so silly. Bulky weight polyester yarn. But I was actually going to totally use it because I was wanted to be true to the knit kit. But which is what happens with most vintage kits. It smelled really funky. And it didn't just smell like the musty funky. It smelled like musty. And then the person who was selling it on eBay was like, hmm, this smells musty. Maybe I should dip it in like my great, great aunt's perfume bottle. So it smelled musty and floral. This is very exciting. So I tried to just let it air out. And then I was like, well, maybe if I wa and then I was like, dude, I'm washing ancient polyester yarn. Just let it go. You've got scraps. You're not even winning a prize for this, so who cares? So I decided to go with scrap yarn. So what I ended up doing was holding, again, it was like bulky wool, and I was very tempted to go to Joanne's or something and get some like cheap roving, rowing, roving or something. But then I was like, no, no, no. I bet if I double up some worsted, it will work. Actually, I didn't think I was going to have to use double worsted, but that's kind of what I ended up doing. So I doubled up worsted, and I totally made things. Right. Okay, so... Gosh! How do they still smell stinky? 
Does the plastic smell that stinky? Is it the paper directions? Whatever. <sighs> Look at how cute it is! I made a little barn! So, do you know what plastic canvas is? I just went on like you all knew that. I'm sure some of you are too young to actually know what this even is. This is an item that is used frequently in craft church bazaars, or just craft bazaars. Um, and it comes in different size holes, and I've actually always been kind of obsessed with it. I've never, I don't think I've ever actually made anything out of it, but I have wanted to on many occasions. It's like building with yarn. But it only occurred to me about two or three months ago that I could actually use real yarn and not like cruddy synthetic yarn on it. And so then that's what I decided that I needed okay, sorry to make about it that. The UPS man came and the dogs lost their minds. So anyway, so I've been exploring a lot of ways to try to use up plastic canvas and scraps. And it may have actually brought me to the point of using Pinterest, even though I secretly hate Pinterest because it messes up all of my Google search results. Same Pinterest. Anyway, <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. So, that's that. Okay, but so then, yeah, so I made this little guy. And what you do is you just cover this plastic canvas in stitching, and then you basically whip stitch them all together. Right. I'm very proud of this. Can you tell? <laughs> Look, I'm going to show it 75 times. So, this is like some peace fleece in the mushroom color. There's Shaplova mushroom. This is some hand spun. This is also peace lace in a green that I cannot... Oh no wait, this is uh, hair still designs in a green. And then there's some like Swan's Island on that for those doors. Look at those fancy doors with their Swan's Island stitching. And then I made this one too. Ta -da! Right. Look, it's got like French knot hydrangeas on it or something. Right? The white's hair is filled, the purple's hair is filled, the red's peace leaves, the green's hair is filled. So yeah, isn't that fun? <laughs> the blue is quince. Even though the blue is actually quince and is only fingering weight, I still only had to use two strands. Which is probably like a tensioning issue. You know, whatever. But right, I'm kind of proud of myself. I've conquered my plastic canvas desires. So now I'm like, gonna. I just feel I have fantasies of being independently wealthy. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And using like crazy scrap busting plastic canvas projects. I know, right? <laughs> Bunkers. But so then I completed another thing. And actually, I'm not gonna lie, I feel totally self-righteous about it. <laughs> I bought this kit, this kit, this kit, this kit, I bought it. I bought this kit at Rhinebeck this year, people. As in like a week ago. It's called the Black Sheep Kit. It's from Going Gnome. They are goinggnome.com and they're in Great Barrington, Mass. They are off to a lot of craft shows. You can follow them on Instagram. They're Going Gnome there as well. Let me just discuss their booth. This year was awesome. Of course. They had all of the hobbits, like styled after the cinemagraph cinemagraphic. They had all of the movie hobbits, <laughs> all the dwarves. Oh my gosh, right? I'm like, yeah, I can't do this podcast unless I'm mentally prepared. This is me mentally prepared. Um, they were amazing though. They had the hobbits and then they had all of the dwarves. Actually, so they only had one hobbit, but he was very cute. And then all of the dwarves and then they had a giant smaug dragon. Plus had all the other cute stuff ever. By the way, the dwarf, I can't remember which one he is, who has the braid across, the fat one. Hi. I like fat things. Who has the braid, the red braids across his chest. Amazing. <laughs> they had him done in wool. Oh, so cute. And I was like, dude, that needs to be the movie. 
can somebody please do some Shaun the Sheepy style stop action with some felted creatures because I am in. I'm kick I'll kickstart you. Show, show me where it is. I'll do it. Anyway. I was kind of afraid because his crit is marked intermediate, which seems to be a slight overestimation of my skills, but let me just show you. I hope, I hope you two picks that as the picture. <laughs> Look at his butt! Shut up! I'm not even kidding you. Do you see how cute it is? I'm not artistic at all. I'm very left-brained which is why I like knitting. It's kind of creative. <laughs> Within parameters. I would be a sonnet writer if I were a poet. But, so, do you see him? So before you put his like outside wool on him, his little locks, I thought he looked, he looked very similar to the pictures because this is all you get for instructions. It's this little guy, but it's all you need. It's very well done. It's very clear. And he looked like what he sh was supposed to look like in this photograph, but he also then looked like one of those Star Wars things that walked out on the plane that was a machine thing. I don't think she'll mind if I just show you this one picture, but like he, right? I don't know what those things are called. I'm not, I'm a Star Trek person. So that's exactly what he looked like. And I thought, oh man. But then you put his little wool, and I was actually really afraid to put his wool on him because I thought that's going to be very complicated. That was the easiest part ever and the funnest part. You have all of these little locks and all you do is you can either do them in a group or you can just do them like in tiny little locks. You really just put them on the body and go poop, poop, poop right at the tip. And then you get them all on there and you're like, hmm, he still looks, he looks a little bit more Lester Longley than I want. So then you just go around and tuck him in just like with like doo -doo, with a needle a couple times. And he looks so stinking cute. Right? I would make like 5,000 of them. Okay, or three. Little ones for ornaments. Wouldn't it be so cute? I gotta find some little locky bits. Totally in love with him. So yay that. So that's all I have for the kid along. But that'll be a good segue to right back. Oh wait, let me talk about my hat real quick. The, I finished my cider press, and I think that's Amy Christopher's, if I'm not mistaken. But it's definitely called the cider press set, because it comes with the pattern for the hat and the fingerless gloves, I'm pretty sure. So this is just, and I'll have the colorway and everything in the notes, but this is just Malabrigo single ply held double. So if you might have too much multicolored uh, finger weight yarn in your stash, It's crazy doc, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> this is a great way to use it up. Um, and so, anyway, and this is even single ply. So, it was very toasty and nice. I enjoy it very much. And you get the extra bits if you want to be the mud chef. I can't do a Swedish accent, but if you were feeling it, you could do that. What? So, I made mine as written. I think I made it like two repeats deeper or something because pretty much as written. So there's that. Now let's talk about Ryan Beck. So if you don't want to hear about Ryan Beck, I'll talk to you next time. But if you do, I'll have it. it was awesome. As usual. Ryan Beck is code for the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. It's held in Rhinebeck, New York. It's at their fair, the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. And this is the third time I've been. And it's amazing every time. I feel like it only gets better. And yet not. Like it's just equally awesome every time, but it's just different. And it's never worse than the time before. But they're all the best for their own reasons. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But it was awesome. I went with Joanna Spring, who was at Spin Farm. Have you bought your calendar yet? Did you know she was doing calendar pre-orders? I hope she's still doing them. If not, you can get one, like when she actually has them later. But she was doing pre-orders. And this year she has both animals and landscapey stuff. Not landscapey stuff. Not animals. 
she's living things and not living things. But anyway, so she and her partner, Bill, drove us there. And then I sat in the back seat with Malia, who was rhymes with Maria on Ravelry, who was amazing. And it was crazy. You're in the car like 13 hours each way and you're only gone for four days. It's intense, man. Like, it's intense. <laughs> but I never wanted to throw anybody out of the car except my own self. So that's pretty amazing, right? Like, when does that happen? 13 hours in a car with people and you don't want to throw anybody out but yourself. Come on! Nuts. So anyway, and so it's very, like, I had a whole, like, list on my little device of, like, shows I needed to watch and the youtube -y thing, not youtube -y things, but, like, shows I needed to watch and books and Ravelry patterns. Pretty exciting, right? I'm like, ooh, you, they're like, <laughs> like the, they're like the, my own, like, Pinterest or something. That's not the right word, but I'm like, oh, you guys go live your life for a year and like gather all the good things. I'm just gonna like chill and not contribute at all. You just bring back everything great and I'm just gonna just, okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's pretty exciting. So we do all the traveling. Olive is looking at me like, what are you doing, mom? I know I haven't done this in a while, but you you remember, right? I feel self-conscious when the people look at me that live in my house now. The dogs are looking at me like, what are you doing, weirdo? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the crew I got to go with, which was super awesome. And I told you about the sadness of the hotel. But other than that way, the hotel was fine. It was very cute. Like, they said it was born in the eight. It was born. <laughs> I believe they said it was, um... And later we found out that it had been on one of those Gordon Ramsay, like, terrible hotel episodes. <laughs> but the, the room itself was was just fine. And it had, like, original tile floor in the bathroom for, like, the 80s, which was amazing. It was crazy. It was totally 70s. It must have been built in the very early 80s. <laughs> but it was amazing. And Belia, I think, said, like, four different times how excited we were about this tile floor. It was, like, all browns, and it had the grout was, like, in perfect condition, and it was the shiniest floor. I totally thought it was just, like, linoleum stock, like, upon first glance. Like, linoleum that had been held pristine in some vault, and then they were just, like, reapplying, like, you know, when it would wear out, they would re... Because it was so shiny. Anyway. So, uh, the room was nice, except for that thing that was very not nice about it. <laughs> but anyway. Can I say it? Anyway. What was it? So I have things I've written down. See, I'm already like, what? Okay, so I talked about that. I talked about the kid along. Okay. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but it seems like I shouldn't talk about that already, but I will. Guess what? What is like the most excitingly Rhinebeckian confluence of amazingness that could happen to me? I don't know what could it be. Could it be that I had made an excuse me poncho of insanity and then maybe also Rhymes with Maria had made one and we were forced to both wear them on the same day because it was going to be very warm the other day. So we had to wear them on Saturday even though it was a little, it was not matchy matchy because I looked completely different, but you know what I mean. And then it was, it was a coincidence that we met up with Dana of Unwind and she was wearing um, the Enchanted Mesa sweater and that we were also with Joanna who was wearing her excuse me hat that I knit her and was it a coincidence that Mr. Stephen West I had seen on Instagram or Facebook or something that he was going to be there signing books at the Jill Draper Makes Stuff Open Studio and I thought oh my gosh would it be possible that he would come to the festival? He probably won't come because you know he would just be mobbed and it would be crazy for him and definitely he could not come to the festival. That would be just bonkers. But maybe all of us in our Stephen West things were walking very near the hill where the donuts, the apple cider donuts are. And maybe Joanna said, wait, and maybe like 10 minutes before 
I think Dana of Unwind said that Stephen West was six foot five. And so then, fast forward, we were going past the hill and then Joanna Spring was like, oh my gosh, is that Stephen West going into the line for donuts? And oh my gosh, was it? He saw us. And we may have had a 20, no, it was not even 20 seconds. We may have had a three second conversation about whether or not we were gonna cost this nice young man. <laughs> and we may have walked ever so subtly and without any to it at all <laughs> up to the donut cider line, uh, apple cider donut line and we may have gotten way too close to Mr. Stephen West okay that's me that's not a that's a royal we that the other ladies were not guilty of that. and we're all like ah. <laughs> and then he was so gracious that not only did he have like a conversation with us about our, our knitwear and ask us like what the yarns were. And then we were like, oh, but you were also amazingly amazing in your knitwear. And he was like, yes, this is my donut eating outfit. And then I may have said, why don't I have a donut eating outfit? And he was like, well, this is now your donut eating shawl or poncho. I don't know, I'm just, I can't remember. I was so excited. And we were all collectively very excited. So there was really no good, this is exactly what happened person. You need to have one impartial narrator, <laughs> the opposite of narrator, the person who takes down the narration for future reference. But I'm pretty sure all of those things happened. And then we were like, somebody was brave enough to say, do you care if we take a picture with you? And he was like, of course. He was like, let's make shapes. So here are the picture. So yeah, that's us making shapes with Mr. Stephen West. What? <laughs> How amazing is that? Rhinebeck, please. <sighs> it was pretty awesome. <laughs> but it was like this perfect, again, he was in line anyway. So it's not like we were stopping him from doing what we, he needed to do. There were like... Four of, uh, Joanna did not necessarily, Joanna opted out of the photograph. <laughs> Lovely Brittany took, or took the photographs, I believe. Yes, she did. Um, but like, so he got like three photographs out of the way at one time. So he didn't have to pose three different, so that was good. Again, he was standing in line anyway. It was early, so he had not been accosted by like 9,000 screaming crazy people yet. <sighs> How fun is that? But anyway, so that was super exciting. And then we were basically all decided that like we were now done. Not that we were done with Rhinebeck, but like it wasn't going to get any better. And maybe we should just all take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but it did get awesomer still because then uh, the meetup was that day. So the podcaster meetup happens on the Saturday of Rhinebeck. The Ravelry meetup is like at noon. And then that kind of bleeds in. The podcast meetup is supposed to be after that, like at one. But there's kind of some overlapping there. So then I get to the podcast meetup, and that was crazy good. Let me just discuss. Like, I was trying to think about, like, how I could do more coverage of Rhinebeck. Like, as maybe, but anyway, so things change, whatever. But one of the things I thought about was, like, should I wear, like, a, should I use, like, a GoPro or something? And then I thought... That's probably maybe not okay because not everybody wants to be videoed and I wouldn't want to make people... And inevitably it's going to be like unflattering at some point of somebody and it might be somebody who really can't handle that. And like, trust me, there's some unflattering photographs of me. I generally don't care. <laughs> but I would be sensitive to other people who did. Do you know? But after the meetup, actually not after the meetup, when I got home and had time to like defrag a little bit, I was like, dude, I should have worn a GoPro camera just for me. Because at what other point in your life, for like two hours straight, do you get to interact with like super happy people who are excited to talk with you, are excited to talk with each other, who are just like excited about the general place that they are in, that never happens, and then say really excessively nice things to you. That also needs to be a model for every 
business ever. <laughs> like every year we're going to have a moment. And like today, Jill, it's your day, Jill. Today, everybody's going to be super excited about you for two hours and you're going to wear the GoPro. So then round about, you know, December, no, then round about to February, when you are really questioning what you're doing this for and why things are happening and you're getting into a stress spiral about whether you're doing a good job or not, you can just replay your GoPro video and then you'll be like, all right, that's what needs to happen. So anyway, I do kind of wish I had a GoPro. <laughs> Because it would have been awesome. Not. I mean, it would have been awesome to share because, again, you're all beautiful and awesome. But it was have just been also nice for myself. Because you were all so kind. There was squealing. There was, like, stomping. It was amazing. What? So exciting. All in a little hood in Rhinebeck, New York. So anyway, so that I meet up lasted for, like, it's supposed to last for an hour. It was totally almost two hours. What? How lucky is that? It was so fun. So, yay. And like the best part is, not only do I get to meet you guys, but I get to meet some of podcasters that I've never met, or that I only get to talk to briefly every year or two. <laughs> and again, I'm just like you. I feel like I know them because I've watched their podcast, or like I've conversed with them through Instagram, or, you know, or you're just even I've followed them on Instagram, so you feel like you have like this kinship with them. You know? So like I got to meet the twin sets, twin set Jan, twin set Ellen, and really I had this moment where I was like, we've never met before, and she was like, no, we've never met before. I was like, how is that possible? Because I feel like we have, <laughs> and that's really what it is. It's this kind of crazy like Instagrammy world that we live in, where you just feel this connection with people that you may have never met in real life, but it's pretty awesome. I feel like I know them way better than I know my neighbors. Okay, these two neighbors I know far too well but like those neighbors I don't <laughs> I know all about their marital discord <laughs> thin walls but anyway so it was just awesome I met sort of an editor who I've never met before just briefly but he was super cute of course all sorts of people Megan was there I Rocknitz was there they're doing their new their knit their venture what are they are they knitwits I think that's no knit cahoots is that right? You know, I rock knits and Megan of Sockin' Zombies. Come on, just run it. They're doing a whole thing. They're making things happen. It was just exciting and wonderful. Got to see Paula. I totally sat next to Paula at Leaping Llamas. <sighs> Paula has such good energy. <laughs> She knows I'm a spaz, like I'm not even going to pretend that she doesn't think I'm a spaz, but she it must be like, whoa, 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 spaz face. Because she just has such a good, calm, grounding energy that whenever I'm near her, I'm just like, I love you! And she's probably like, stop stomping in my calm pond, lady. <laughs> but I totally got to sit next to her in the which is the next day, so I'll fast forward, fast forward next day. Leaving llamas. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm hesitant to talk about it because it's so awesome that eventually they're going to have to build like an entire stadium to house the leaping llamas and I don't want them to have to do that. But it's amazing. It happens on Sunday morning at like 11, 11, 15, something like that. And what it is, it's put on by the, I think they're called the Dutchess County Spitters. It's like their local 4-H that have alpacas and llamas. And it's really like they just they put up like two poles in the middle of an arena and there it starts the lowest rung and the animals and their handlers come around and jump the bar, the pole. And so you get everything from these tiny, tiny little goats. I mean, really. Like this tiny. <laughs> All the way up to like tall llamas. And they're leaders, and so you get to hear the lady narrates. She talks a little bit about their farms or the kids or whomever. And they just keep going around till the animal can't jump over the pole anymore. And this year there were no crazy shenanigans with the pole, but like in years prior there was a little boy who the pole gets quite high. And there's part of the enjoyment of this activity is watching the handlers figure out how to go around, over, or under this pole. 
and it that's I mean that may be it that's like 39 percent maybe 43 percent of the enjoyment it can actually be more than that but <laughs> in years past there's this little boy who once the bar got above like his chest would run with because there's this like dilemma right you're running with this animal to try to get it enough momentum so that it can jump over this this pole but again, like if you divert around the edge of the pole, the llama or the alpaca or the goat is be like, dude, that's where I'm going to go too. So then they want to follow you. You, you know, once that pole gets above like, you know, mid thigh height, there be, or like even, and it gets higher, but it once about that height, people start doing the like jog up to it. And then the person stops because they don't know how to get over the pole. So then the animal stops and then it's like a whole thing. But one year, a little boy would like run up to the pole and like he was approaching with his llama and they were running and he would get right up on it and he would throw the lead and he would slide under the pole and catch them. It's very enjoyable. So this year they even had like extra seating because it's become such a popular event. Oh my gosh. And we were going to totally get um, apple cider donuts because we the lines had been crazy all weekend. And we went to um, get them before the event on Sunday and there was still a crazy line and so we were like oh what want no donuts for us but then we got there and Casey who's tangerine designs and her crew of folks had bought extra donuts and they let us have some they didn't just let us have some they were like please take these donuts it was awesome Olive was upset that she did not get a donut by the way I love Annie just as much as I love Olive Annie is just not into this kind of stuff. She doesn't just like jump up on you and, and love you. She has to be off. She has to be invited. Olive is just like, Boop! she's on you. But Annie is polite. And also she doesn't care. So she's like sleeping under a couch somewhere. But anyway. So. Amazing. And of course I bought all the things and looked at all of the things. But I also didn't buy so many things right? Sorry, but no matter how many crazy, how much craziness you think you've done at Lorraine Beck, you st still p did not buy like 95% of the things you could have, potentially. Just saying. <laughs> yes, I bought four skeins of yarn from Miss Babs, but there were like 800 that I could have bought and I didn't. I did not buy all of that yarn. I think I deserve a medal or some more yarn. <laughs> So I'm just, just, you know, perspective. I talked myself out of at least three crazy purchases. So I'm feeling very good about that. <laughs> but let's talk about what I did buy. Because this episode is already crazy too long. Okay, oh, Olive, really? That's a little too personal. Thank you. Yeah, I'll save that. I was brought my spinning over to talk about that, but I'll talk about that next time. Because really, this episode is crazy long. So, okay. So before I talk about what I bought at Rideback, ah! Bob had just rolled off the thing. I do want to say very briefly that I got these sock blanks. Usually I don't show things that I purchased, but these are so fun and different that I have to show you. I bought these sock blanks. Well, actually, I traded for them because that's how I do things. From Ninja Chickens. And her shop is on Etsy. It's ninjachickens.etsy.com, and she still had some when I looked last. But she does these, they're eco-printed sock blanks. So, like, you can totally see that these are apples, right? Sh -sh Shut up. These are apples, like, from her backyard. And other things. What else is on this one? Dyed with apples, onion skins, eucalyptus, and dahlias in an indigo dye bath. Like, how cool is that? I'm so excited about it. Oh. And the cool thing is, she was concerned because she has this place where she's wrapped all this stuff up before she dyes it. But what I'm going to do is just use that for my heels and toes. And isn't that fun looking, even just by itself? And then there's even more apple. Look at that! Like, how cool is that? Go into chickens. Brilliant! So I also got this one because I'm just selfish and stuff. Gluttonous. So this one... How cool is this? No commercial dyes. This one is dyed with eucalyptus, cochineal, and onion. So 
there she is, Ninja Chickens. She's Ninja Chickens at Etsy.com. This reminds me of those pods that we get. Did you say what it was? Oh, look at the apples. That's it. Right, I'm so excited about it. I'll show it to you all I want. It's my show. <laughs> um, so yay that. Okay, so then here's the actual things I purchased at right back. I'm not gonna show you. I'll talk about that in a minute. So I bought this mug last year. This is Stanhope Pottery. Yes. So this is from Stanhope Pottery. They have a build. They have a booth in Building B, I want to say. And I loved. I didn't. They didn't have any mugs last year. When I, because I didn't go there, I think, last year until Sunday. Because it was one of those things where it was a show and tell. And then I was like, oh my god, I want that. So I went there on Sunday. And they, they only had, like, big steins. And this is even actually a little big for me. But it's perfect for tea or, you know, day drinking. <laughs> on the down low. Right, that's a perfect margarita size. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But anyway, so they have this style, which is my favorite. And then they also do like a white with blue, um, and I don't know what that's called. I thought I knew. No, I don't remember. But anyway, so they do mugs, they do yarn bowls, they do serving platters, they have all sorts of stuff, and it was beautiful. So that was my first pictures. This is the first year that I've really been tempted by the Jenny the Potter mug, and I was it had hedgies on it and mushrooms and acorns but I just we didn't get there like right at the crack of dawn so I by the time we were in the in the fairgrounds it was too late <laughs> which is good because it's a white mug and I probably would have stained it and then been very sad so but oh my gosh that gin bottom mug was so cute this year and yes you can order them but I just you know I'm crazy. Anyway, so there's that. Oh, and then I showed you my going gnome kit. Well, I got to. <laughs> but look how cute this one is. This one is new for 2017. And he's a Santa. And he's like, you know, like this is big. And see, the, the sheep kit was 22 and he was 25. I don't know why I feel I need to tell you that, but. I just somehow did all of a sudden. <laughs> but her kits are great. You have everything you need. I had more locks and more wool than I needed for him. And I still have a few gnomes to do for my miniature gnome kit last year. But it's on my list of things to do very soon. I did two of these guys last year. So I have a few more to do. But anyway, they're really fun. And again, it's still, it's still kind of knitting adjacent because it's wooly. But it's a very different process. Obviously, <laughs> but it's still, it still somehow feels, I don't know, like, it just somehow feels like you're still doing, again, something with, I love wool, and so I love knitting, and I love doing wool stuff, so that's a temptation, okay, so then I will show you all of the things that were gifted to me, because they were very, very generous gifters, but I'll show you the things I did actually use my dollars to purchase. Some people are weirded out that I do that, but I just feel... I don't know. That's just how I prefer to do it. So that's how I'll do it. Um, I was at the Hawthorne, the Hawthorne, the Harrisville Designs booth and got these two skeins of Flywheel and Nelson. I feel like it was Fiber Town. Am I making this up? I'm just remembering this out of the vast emptiness of my own mind. <sighs> Who's doing um, a color work pattern with this as the background and their gold as the foreground. And I might have another skein of that. I'm just saying. Definitely. I do. So I wanted to copy her, her shamelessly. <laughs> so there's that. And then, by the way, that was another thing. I was very good. I did not. They have their new um, 
their hair is still delayed. They now have a bulky, and then they also had um, Brooklyn Tweed's bulky, the quarry, and I wanted both of those. They had great colors and all of them, but and I even had two skeins in my hand, and then I put them down. So somehow that made up for those two skeins I bought. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> those had a purpose, so it's easier to justify. I don't. So actually, the first day, all I bought was my mug and this from Going Gnome. Well, two things. Not Going Gnome. Gnome Spun. There's lots of gnomes in my life. From Gnome Spun, I bought this. This is Tunis and Autumn Leaves. I thought originally I had never spun Tunis, but I may be a liar. I maybe have spun it before. But it's like a toothy. But look at those colors. Come on. This screams right back. And then I bought this. This still has hay on it from where I dropped it in their booth. I may have dropped like four bumps of roving in their booth and that I'm sorry people. <laughs> this is also from Gnome Spun. This I had never heard of. It's Debule, like Rambule, only it's Debule. And this is called the It's Not Easy Being Green Colorway. Honey, hush. It's okay. Change to my side. Can you wait just a minute? Thanks. You're awesome. But isn't that a crazy fun green? So yay, those things. And then day two is when I bought the flywheel. And, oh, I went to Into the World. Ooh, I found a can of soda. <laughs> kind of like intentionally dehydrate yourself at Rhinebeck so that you don't have to wait in line for the bathroom like 75 times a day. But I did drink way more soda than my body is used to. <laughs> so I bought this. This is Cripple Creek from Into the World on Falkland. It's beautiful. And then I bought this, which is Mud Bogs and Moonshine on Tarhi. And of course, their stuff is always amazing. And originally I thought, no, I don't need to buy any fiber. But really, I've been doing good about spinning up fiber. And I don't have a crazy fiber stash right now. I can buy my standards. <laughs> Those are the only standards that count. Make sure. Okay, yes. And then my last purchase, see how reasonable that was? Like a nun of purchases. So chaste. I saw this on the first day with Joanna. I don't know if you remember, if you've watched the podcast since last year, I bought Tova this panda mask that was wool, and I apologize. I don't have her card, I don't think. I'm sorry, let me be a jerk. She's right next to Gail's art at the festival and last year I bought this like super cool mask with I wonder if this is her I bet this is her yes I bet this is her um so last year I bought my panda mask for I bought a panda mask for Tova there by the way when you buy from Harrisville Designs at Rhinebeck they give you a free shipping coupon because I totally want to buy some of those holiday um potholder loops does anybody want to go in with those on me? Did I just say words that made any sense to anybody? I need like a buddy who wants to go in on a purchase of those with me because it makes enough for like nine potholders and I do not need nine holiday potholders. <laughs> but he was like, yay! Oh, don't use that code if you didn't go to Ryan Beck and buy something from them. I didn't think about that. <laughs> don't do that, okay? That wouldn't be cool. Don't do that. That's not cool. I know you wouldn't. Just say in the case that person would. But I know she wouldn't either. But I didn't even think about that. I'm sorry. Anyway. So I believe this is from Flowering Heart Homestead, if I'm not mistaken. And I saw him on day one. And I wanted him intensely. And then... I said, no, I don't need to purchase him today. So then the next day I saw him again and wanted him intensely, but I said, no, I don't need him. I don't need things that just sit around the house. I have two of those. <laughs> then the same bar that he was in, Malia and Joanna, like they needed to purchase something that I did not want to purchase. So I went back and got him. <laughs> Because I couldn't resist anymore. I had already resisted twice. 
couldn't resist the third time. So can you tell? It's, it's hard to read him through, I think, a video stream. He's a pig, and he is amazing. Do you love him? I am not, like, a huge collector of pigs or anything like that, but I just love him. He's so piggy. So between him and my sheep, I need to do some, like, witchcraft or something. Get myself a farm. Right? I love them. One day, maybe. Yeah. One day before I'm too old to take care of them. Sheeps and pigs. So anyways, that's all the things I bought a rag bag. Like, really? That's not crazy at all. I'm not going to try to hold the mug because I don't want to risk breaking it. But I mean, come on. everything I purchased. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's my standard this year. <laughs> that's the standard of how I did well. I can hold everything I purchased. All I need is this mug and this wool pig. All I need is this mug and this wool pig and this kid to make a Santa Claus. All I need is this mug and this wool pig and this kid to make a Santa Claus and some flywheel from Harris Phil Jones. Another still designs. Okay, if you don't know what that's from, it's from The Jerk. It was like one of my all-time favorite movies. Pre-age 25. Not that I don't like it now, I just haven't watched it in a long time. <laughs> but anyway, yay! And then the last thing I'll do is shameless self-promotion. Yeah, last thing I'll do is shameless self-promotion. So, I did a Rhinebeck when I was at Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck update. Because I know that when I don't get to go to festivals, I like to purchase things online. <laughs> So even though I hadn't done a podcast to let y'all know, I did go ahead and put these out. So these are still in the shop. These are Pie Bird bags. Uh, and I love them. Do you see how cute they are? Do you know what a Pie Bird is? When I told my mom that people weren't like super jazzed about them, she was like, well, maybe they don't know what a Pie Bird is. Do you know what a Pie Bird is? I don't have one. But there's like this little ceramic sculpture and you would put them in the middle of the pie and the theory would be that they would help the, the steam escape from your pie so you wouldn't get like big bubbles in your pie crust. I think that they really don't work, but they're very cute. <laughs> so the bag itself has the pie birds. And then do you see this? Do you see that the division between them is like lattice pie dough? It's basically, it's a pie bag. And the colors that are behind the pie birds are very uh, pie appropriate. So you get cherry pie and you get your berry pie and you get what I would think would be pumpkin pie and maybe like a custard pie. What? How cute are those? So yeah, there's still plenty in the shop if you're interested. I'm not pressing you. I'm not pressing you. But if you're interested, they're so cute. And they're fun color. It's like a fun fall color way because it has the warmth kind of of fall colors, but it's still bright and cheery. Because you know you're gonna need that in February, people. <laughs> so that's all. So again, I'll do another episode in just a few days with, um, actually I'll try to do, it'll be knitting and spinning. Then there will be shameless promotion probably for a, um, the first kind of like Christmas slash winter update of the year, which will be November 4th. So that'll happen next. And then I'll talk one more time about donations to the show and prizes. And then I'll draw for those for the end of the first of November. So yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.